I'm the mother of a young son. I'm raising my son as a capitalist. I'm raising my son as an artist. I'm raising my son as a philanthropist. On some kind of paper, these all sound like noble goals, and no doubt there are some parents out there who will endeavour to say them. Uh, but that's not what most parents do. Most parents have at least enough common sense to understand that the correct answer when it comes to this sphere of thought is, I'm raising my child to be whatever they want to be. And I'm raising my son as a feminist. The reason people understand this is not just the principle. It's also the only thing that works in practice. Children get older and they rebel. It's in our nature. And the thing they rebel against the most is whatever they are most forbidden from rebelling against. Including parents. But with one exception, which I'll get back to. I mean, I'm raising my son to be straight doesn't work. It's quite notorious for not working. And I'm raising my son to be gay doesn't work. Try that and you'll end up with a raging dude bro. If you push a child in one direction, they will recalibrate and maybe even overcompensate. Children can't necessarily consciously tell if something's wrong, but they developmentally sense it. I mean, the, the adults who are the least interested in smoking are the ones whose, whose parents were the most interested in smoking. That's why these things skip generations, and it's largely why it's a good idea to just let children be what they want to be. That, then they can't go in the opposite direction. They can't rebel against what they want to be. They don't have to waste time and concentration recalibrating for your nonsense. They could just do their thing. I mean, you might say... I'm raising my child to be a non-smoker, and that's a perfectly noble goal, but guess what? That is exactly how you raise a smoker. Parents who are smokers seem to understand this better than parents who are non-smokers, however ironic that is or isn't. So, what's the exception? What's, what's the only kind of group of people? who don't understand this. The only kind of group of people who are institutionally allowed to not understand this. Who can get away with saying, I'm raising my son as a... Catholic. I'm raising my daughter as a Muslim. <laughs> For some reason, these declarations are untouchable. The left and the right both seem to agree on this. It's wrong to make to raise a child to a prescribed sexuality. It's wrong to raise a child to a prescribed economic policy. But it is perfectly acceptable to raise a child to a prescribed religion. So, ladies of HuffPo, if you're going to say this shit and propose that you get away with saying this shit then you are going to have to admit, once and for all, that feminism is a religion. Which will win you no truck with me. I don't think it's right to raise a child to a prescribed religion either. But in the eyes of the public, if you want feminism to have a protected status like this, a status enjoyed by no secular ideology, then you must accept that this is not a secular ideology. It is a religion. You need to admit this, or you sure as fuck don't get to brainwash children with it. Okay? Now go on. Tell us why it's okay that you get to indoctrinate your child into this religion. It's 2015. It's too early to drink. Is it here? I need a name for this dilemma because it happens so often. How... How late in the day does it have to be? And how disastrously epic does the stupid have to burn before no one would blame you for drinking?
I might call it the Bukowski conundrum. <laughs> he worked in the postal industry too, you know. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the Bukowski of your generation. I'm saying I have the Bukowski of your generation chained to an empty sarcophagus in my basement. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to do something I've never done before in a video. I'm going to have to switch this shit off and wait for the Bukowski cusp. <laughs> Actually, Bukowski probably would have started the day with a drink. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Fuck it, you might as well just call it the Random Acam Meridian. Because <laughs> that's a bit easy to say. And makes perfect sense. Yeah, if, if you can say Random Acam Meridian, then at least it's not too early <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but yeah, it's lunchtime here. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm going to have a nap. And then wake up and start drinking. That's always fun. Tactical choice. Mold wine. It's like only 10%. It's not very nice. So I'm not going to drink it too quickly and I'm not going to get too drunk. Also, it was dirt cheap, which is handy. So go on, ladies. Tell us why your ideology gets all the social perks of an established religion. Plus all the financial benefits of an academic science. But sexism is, well, everywhere. Okay, so feminism is the good force and sexism is the bad force. And <laughs> gotcha, that makes all the sense that I'm making it make. I mean, unless feminism is just a kind of sexism. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that doesn't follow at all, does it? It's not as though femme is a kind of sex. And fixing that, it's my job. Hey, I don't know, maybe it is, but it's not your job to have your son fixed. Unless your son is broken. Is your son broken? And how did that happen? Was it because he was born? And it's my job. It's my job and your job too. <laughs> you all really want this job, don't you? <laughs> it's because this job is the boss. Oh, and dads? Wait, scratch that. <laughs> I just... Scratch it off, go on. All men. Top fucking cake. One more time. All men. That means you are talking to me. And when I respond to you, you don't get to call it harassment and have me silenced. Is that clear? You said something to me, and I get to say something back. And all three and a half billion men also get to say something back because you addressed each and every one of them. So if three and a half billion people each respond to you once, listen to me carefully, if you wake up with three and a half billion messages from three and a half billion different accounts, that is not harassment. That is you pissing off three and a half billion people. Is that Clear. You are half of this equation. Which half of feminism is the men's rights half? Because I can't find it. <laughs> so I've looked everywhere. It's like skating inside a Klein bottle. It doesn't have it inside. <laughs> it's made entirely of outside. And it starts at my house and your house. When the fuck? Did you get it into your heads that you can tell other people how to run their house? Thousands of fucking years ago, love. That's when. Some of you do it by telling everyone there's a man in the sky who's going to get you. Unless you run your house like we tell you to. And some of you do it by telling everyone that there are men over there who'll get you. <laughs> Same shit, different demonstrative pronoun, essentially. What we say, it matters. Why is that? Is it because you say so? 
Yeah, I wouldn't accept that answer when I was a child, and I'm certainly not accepting it now. Fuck good and off, please. It means teaching our kids that boys and girls can do anything. Except not be a feminist. Disobeying feminism is completely forgotten, but everything else is fine. It means throwing out those old ass gender norms. Ah, oh, ageist. Glass houses, my darling. <laughs> They're not going to want to put you on camera for much longer. I, 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 it's, it's weird, though, isn't it? You can't really have progressivism without ageism. It's sort of the point, isn't it? Or is it, you, know, you, you want people of all ages, you just don't want your ideas to be old. <laughs> well, feminism is a lot older than the men's rights movement. And you know, MGTOW is even younger. And Gamergate is even younger than that. <laughs> so really, those guys are the most progressive people out there. Gosh, should we be angry? Gosh, he called us progressive. Help! Fuck it, let's just call MRA's pussies and say they're co-opting us. And really give people the impression that we could take a joke. We're the only good ones! Rah! Yeah. I'm all three of these things, by the way. I've just never heard men's rights advocates bitching at me for doing their movement wrong. I've never heard a feminist do anything but bitch at people for doing their movement wrong. It means teaching our boys that their voices aren't the only ones that matter. That is a very important lesson. Are you also going to teach it to your girls? Or would that be misogyny? And sometimes the most important thing to do is listen. What, to your son? <laughs> what am I like? What am I like, eh? What the fuck am I actually like? It means talking about consent. Uh, yeah, are you going to ask him if he consents to being a feminist? And how young can he be for that consent to still be meaningful? And calling body parts what they are. Genitals. Say it. Mutilation. Penis. Legal. And still standard practice in almost every country. Vagina. Forbidden. Except in the poorest countries in the world, where they routinely mutilate the genitals of both girls and boys. No pee-pees and hoo-hoo's in my house. That's generally the rationale, yes. And how we talk about bodies, that also affects how we talk about space, consent, and respect. And your overall conclusion is that these are things that women should have. So, okay, you're going to teach your son about consent. Again, how old does he have to be? How long are you going to wait until you start teaching him not to rape? And how are you going to do that? I think, I think that's a valid question. And you probably don't like that question because the answer starts with by assuming he is going to rape. I, I want to know how you're going to get over that hump. When, when your son looks at you with a brow furrowed like never before and says why do you think I would do that I'm your son what are you gonna do what are you gonna say to him and is it going to start with yes but Yes, I know you're my flesh and blood and my only connection to the infinite, but I've got this ideology I learned in school, see? And it's more important than you. And they told me you are a rapist. Son? What we watch and read at home matters too. You can have the remote control, we don't want it anymore. We have the internet now, where people are allowed to use inflammatory language, like pee-pee and hoo-hoo. There are smart, active, determined girls on television and in books. Marie Curie, Grace Hopper, Rosa Parks, and Hershey Ali. Like Pippi Longstocking, Ladybug Girl, 
race for president, Doc McStuffins. Not even Nancy Drew, eh? It means learning to express your feelings with words, not anger. Oh, okay. Um, I don't want to be a feminist. Not anger. That wasn't anger. Not anger. That, that, that wasn't anger, that was words. Not anger. I... I... Do want to be a feminist? Words. Okay, that was words. <laughs> so, words but not anger. Because angry words are not words. Words are not anger. Uh, yes, that's that's absolutely true. Why not? Okay, so I'll okay, I'll say I'm a feminist. Words. Yes, and I'll and I'll say, I I, I love women. Words. Uh, but I'm. I really don't want to get married. Not anger. Yeah, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not anger. I've looked at the situation and I just don't... Not anger. What? So if... Not anger. It, it, it sort of feels like you just... Not anger. All right, then, I'll get married. Words. And I'll have children. Words. And I'll never get to see them and neither will you. Not anger. Not word. Anger. Not anger. I mean, they say no man can understand what goes on in a woman's head, but I think I get pretty close sometimes. Like, accidentally. Words, not anger. But to address your point, madam, if we're going to use words without using anger, then might I suggest you don't call your son a rapist? Because I suspect those words might be coming from an angry place. Or at the very least, they passed an angry place on their way to the surface. Don't talk to your son like he's a potential rapist. Because it's extremely, extremely unlikely that he is, unless you make him one. Perhaps through the viral effects of some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> is there any chance any of this is clear? Girls cry and boys cry. Yes, but boys don't have a reason to cry, is the difference. Uh, Patriarchy makes it easier for women to cry and harder for men to cry. That's how it works, right? So it's not as though boys shouldn't cry. It's just that they have no reason to. Because the world is set up for their benefit, you see. As far as the followers of patriarchy theory are concerned. We all have feelings inside that need to come out, and that's okay. <clears throat> yes, provided you're a feminist. This is how it actually works. We've discovered it ourselves. If you're a feminist... You get to cry whenever you like. Please do. It'll get more juicy bait for the clicks. But if you're not a feminist, then you're just crying for attention and playing the victim and you should shut up and grow up and fuck off forever. Quite evidently, regardless of your gender. Look, I tell my kids, use your words for good. Words are not a superpower, like laser eyesight. They are a function of evolution, just like bioluminescence or camouflage. They are used for describing and informing and persuading and perhaps entertaining sometimes. I don't quite know what you mean by using words for good. That sounds you know, rather morally arbitrated to me. Do you mean don't bear false witness? Because I would agree with that, wholeheartedly and pants downedly. But I don't think people require an ideology to stop them from lying. I think all any ideology has ever done is make people lie. And lie. And lie and lie and lie. And I am not going to stop you from lying. Because I understand the protocol when it comes to sleeping dogs. But what I am going to do is rock up right next to you and sit. No one ever said being a parent was easy. Uh, yeah, your sons will find it impossible. Literally impossible unless they're very lucky indeed. But it's work that needs to be done and we're going to do it, damn it. The, the work that needs to be done is getting that, that broad range of foods on that supermarket shelf whenever you need it. There are scores and scores of people involved in the process of getting that food from the third fucking world clean into your shopping trolley. And almost all of those people are men. 
And if you teach your son to be a feminist, then the best job he will ever have is stacking those shelves before he dies of a meth overdose. That's what you can expect to happen if you teach a Jewish child to be a Nazi. In an alternate universe in which the Nazis won. We are going to parent a generation of boys that are part of the solution. Yeah, the final one. Rather than the problem. I do not have children, nor do I intend to have any, but I'm pretty sure if I did, I would try my best not to treat them as a problem or treat them as a solution. I would endeavour to treat them as the person who is examining this equation. I mean, I might have it all wrong after all. To be honest, I'd really like to just show feminism to a child and say, what do you think? and just get their actual honest answer. And this is why the Faculty of Humanities has a department called Religious Studies. Because feminism isn't just about women, it's about everyone. So how long have you been raising your daughters as feminists? How many generations of girls have already been told you are part of a gender that throughout history has been considered the less valuable gender? For how long has that been okay? How long was it considered socially acceptable to tell a girl what to think before you finally turned around and said, oh, hey, maybe we should tell boys what to think as well. <laughs> and is that how this works? When a new mutation of the virus comes along, you test it out on the women first. It is about everyone. They say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And the way to a woman's heart is usually through her liver, <laughs> in most people's experience. But the way into the heart of the entire species, to the nerve center, to the third eye of the superorganism, Evidently is up a woman's ass and through a human centipede of marginalized body parts before coming to rest in a vestigial swim bladder curved into the shape of rape. <laughs> Look, I, I fucking tried to make this fun, but the more you think about it, the more you realize how dark it all is. I, fuck it, I need more booze. <laughs> it's running out and it's still too... I need, I need it to be really low alcohol and really fucking disgusting. <laughs> Can anyone think of any countries I just explained? Uh, I offend everyone. I offend everyone who wants to be offended. And so should you, kids. The laters. Fuck good and right. Yeah. Uh. Now go watch the rant circuit. It's like a rage off. Who wins? Me. I do. <laughs>